Hey all, this is Ewan Henry with Tech In My Life. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. If not, welcome back. So today we're going to tackle part two of my bike upgrade um, using Shimano Ultegra Di2. Now, if you're not in the bike world, if you're not in a bike culture, not really into cycling, then you'd probably be surprised to find out that these days bikes run on batteries. So you got your electric bikes, which literally propels the bicycle by batteries, and you have your regular bike is just a gear shift via um, battery power. So what I'm going to do today is just do a dry run. I'm going to use the um, the electronic cable, they're called E-tube wiring, to connect the shifters, the front shifter, the rear shifter, and, and in my case, there's two derailers, um, a front derailleur and a back derailleur. The back derailleur shifts up and down the cassette, the front derailleur shifts up and down uh, the big ring, which is um, close to the bottom bracket. And again, I'm assuming that you know, visitors to my channel, um, subscribers to my channel are probably not in the cycling world, but it's a big part of my life. And like I said earlier in my intro, tech in my life, and this is a big part of my life, um, cycling. And the technology that goes into uh, bicycles these days, you guys would be shocked at the amount of tech in bicycles. Um, from the head unit, that's uh, GPS head units with just a myriad of metrics that it track, to again, in this case, what I'm gonna tackle today, the gearing. And simply put, you have a battery that shifts the derailleur, which is the mechanism that moves the chain on the bicycle up and down the cassettes to give you uh, different gear ratios. And back in the day, it was fully mechanical, cable actuated, uh, cable from the shift levers back to the uh, derailleur, the back or the front derailleur, and you shift and the cable would release or increase tension, thus driving the um, the railer up and down the cassette. Now it's all done with batteries. Um, and you know, with everything, there's the good and the bad. Uh, I love the DI2, I love the precision of it, um, the consistency of it. And with the cable, there were things I love about cable, like you never had to worry about charging a battery with the cable, of course, with cable actuated um, gears. But there was a ni little niggling problems because what would happen with a cable, a cable would sometimes stretch, most times stretch and would need replacing. And as that cable stretch, you would get some um, inconsistencies in the way you would shift your gears. So fast forward to today, you don't necessarily have to worry about the cable um, stretching and any inconsistencies with shifting because it's all done via battery, but you do have to now charge your bike. Now, um, the charging is, it's a very simple process. Just like your phone, your bike, you just hook it up to a charger and you charge it. The great thing about this um, charging process is it's not done as often as say your cell phone. I don't have to charge my bike after every ride. Um, I set a calendar reminder and once every maybe three to four months, I'll charge my bike. Um, on the head unit itself, which I have one somewhere around here, on my head unit, there's a display that tells me what percentage battery I have left on um, my, my bicycle, excuse me, on my bicycle's internal battery. And that helps me to, uh, to just to know and keep track of, of course, just like with your phone, when to charge your battery. And the beauty of this is the battery, it's a pretty big battery. Um, and with the shifting, I'm not shifting, um, uh, how do I want to say this? The amount of shifting that I'm doing and the amount of power that's um, being used to shift is not a lot considering the size of the battery and what it's doing. So that means you can go months between charging and my longest ride might be, let's say a three hour ride. And it's not like a phone that has a screen that comes on that's, that's sucking up a ton of um, battery power. So I'm able to go quite a significant amount of time between charging um, the battery for my bike. 
Now, like I said earlier, we're going to get into these boxes. We're going to open these boxes, wire everything together, pull out the app. Yes, there's an app also. I forgot to mention that. There's an app to help you set up the gears. Um, what it does, it, it basically tells the derailleur what position it needs to be in to get precision shifting. Um, because it's, it's, it moves in percentages of millimeters and that's how precise the movement is. And what'll, what can happen is you have the cassette, which the chain sits on, and there's seven, I believe, seven increments to the left and seven increments to the right of that uh, position, of the chain position on the cassette. So if you're getting a little bit of rubbing or a little bit of chain clatter, you might need to just make that micro adjustment either left or right to center the chain on the cassette to get that um, chain clatter to go away and get that precise shifting. Um, way more than I planned on getting into, I'm just kind of winging it, freestyling it here. Um, that just kind of came to mind in the whole setting up process. So like I said, we're gonna take everything out the box, put them all together, get the app, and create a new bike, which is basically what the, the, the app is viewing each set of gears that's connected as one bike. And we'll set that up, make sure everything is working right. And then um, my last video, which I'm hoping um, would come soon after this one, would be after I get all the components onto the bike. So my plan for today, today is actually um, Friday, September 2nd. So I'm hoping that tomorrow I, I'll do a ride in the morning and then come home and start disassembling uh, my bike and then go into um, assembling the new uh, group uh, bike term. The the all the pieces of uh, bicycle gearing is called a group, Grupo. Um, so I'm hoping I can get to assemble all of the components, the Grupo, onto the bike um, tomorrow, September 3rd. Um, so that's where we are. Let's, uh, let's get going and get this uh, show on the road here. Okay, now that we got everything connected, it's time to get everything synced. So here I am in the app. We're gonna create a new bike by hitting the plus sign. And oh, 
I also have to push the sync button on the back of the derailleur. Where is it? Right here. There we go. So now it just saw that rear derailleur. Okay. Register as new bike. Any, let's check and see if we have any updates. Okay, we have an update for rear derailleur, update for the front derailleur, and an update for the battery. So we're gonna update all. And we're gonna update all of the firmware on every component and we'll come back in a second. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. I was able to get all of the uh, components connected. Once everything is connected, I went into the app, created a new bike profile. And at first, what I did was sync the, um, the shifters to the rear derailleur wirelessly. And then I actually um, unsynced them, detethered them, whatever you want to call it. And then I just made sure that if it's not synced wirelessly, that it can still control the, um, the front and rear derailleur. And that, of course, worked out just fine. So again, I don't want to use um, the wireless function. Hey guys, editing you in here. So as I sat down and started doing the editing, I realized I need to just discuss something with you guys right away. So I ran into a problem because as I'm building the bike, I did a dry run setting up the uh, assembling the components. Now, as I assemble the components, everything seemed to check out okay. But once I got them on, once I got all of the components onto the bike, I realized I was having a problem. Whenever I shift the front derailleur, the rear derailleur would automatically go from whatever gear it's in all the way down to the 11 tooth cog or 11 tooth cassette rather, and it just kept happening. I have no idea why it was happening. Um, so I jumped online and started looking up and I went to one of the DI2 resources, uh, Better Shifting, and a guy, Terry, immediately um, reached back out to me after I sent him an email. Uh, he was a little bewildered, thought it was strange also. Um, I let him know how I set my um, system up that I was trying to go fully wired, that I ran a wire from the DI2 battery to the shift levers and him just like me was under the impression that that would work um, well the hydraulic levers only have two ports on each lever one port the top port is for the e-tube the bottom port is for the satellite um, sprint shifters now if you plug the uh, battery or the, uh, the, the e-tube into that satellite shifter port you're gonna have a problem because that's what I did. For the time being, I'm not going to be able to go fully wired. Um, the way I'm going now is semi-wireless and I ordered the junction box already. So once that come, I'm gonna use the junction box to connect to the brake wire. I'm sorry, to connect to the battery line. And then from the battery E-tube, I'm gonna break out from there to the left and the right shift levers. That solves the problem. So right now, let me just get back to finish editing this video and uh, we can go from there. Worked out just fine. So again, I don't wanna use um, the wireless function. Now, I don't know what happens to the batteries that's in the shift levers. I might just take those out completely to make sure that um, not only that they're not being used, but I know sometimes when you leave batteries in an item um, too long, it can start corroding and um, I, I, I want to stay away from that. So I might just take the batteries out completely that way down the road. I don't forget that the batteries are in the shift levers and cause any problems. But yeah, I was able to 
get everything connected, get everything synced. Um, and I made sure everything was, all the firmware was updated. Okay, that's it guys. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. While you're at it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button if anything you found here was useful. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, we'll get this done and um, I'll try to take you guys for a ride with me once everything is done to let you guys know how it's all shifting and how everything is working out. Until then, be safe out there. Take care. Bye.